Hello and welcome to Ticking All The Boxes for this weekend. We've got to say weekend, young Nick, because they're not racing on Saturday in Melbourne because the footy's on. Yeah, I know. So they race on Friday night and Sunday. It's good to see where their um, priorities are. Oh, they live for it down there. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, how are you, Nick Cashman? I'm good. Very flat out in the same how many, shirt. How many shirts, how many pink shirts have you got? Uh, no, it's the same one. I just leave it in the office every week. It's a little bit... If I, if I stood up and you saw the tracksuit pants and the actual length of this shirt, then uh, you'd realise I can't wear it. What's the go with the buttons? Like you only do a couple up, mate. There's no point showing me hairy chest. I'm not interested. I've got nothing, eh? I've had about five hours sleep in the last two nights. <laughs> well, I'm guessing uh, you'll be having similar tonight. Tonight, yeah. Dapto dogs. Dapto dogs. All right. Um, Rose Hill Saturday. Uh, <laughs> a week away from it. Oh, I'm good. I'd never ask you that. No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, no, everything's good. Um, yeah, everything's good. Manly are out. Manly are out. Manly yeah. are out. Everyone's happy about that. I don't know if anyone's happy. I'd have preferred Manly Canterbury Grand Final. It would have been a cracker. Yeah. Storm. What about that old saying, treats never prosper, doesn't apply to the NRL? <laughs> Canterbury v Melbourne, eh? <laughs> yeah, so, me too, too. so the way the way to guarantee yourself success in the next few years is to go out and rot the salary cap, yep. and then a couple of years later you'll be in the grand final. Yeah, yeah. Although they they claim that other teams are doing it as well, don't they? So not as badly as them. No, exactly. Well, at least they're doing a better job of it. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> and the AFL, we've got the Swannies going round. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got the old red and white scarf out over there. Thought if Manly's out, time to back the Swans. Hopeful rather than confident. Yeah, I think they're so. a good team. That other mob. Yeah, they are a good team. And but the wet track. Uh, I think a wet track will help Sydney more than it will help Hawthorne. Yeah, there's a couple of blokes saying it will help Hawthorne. Really, so, I don't uh, think they know much about the game. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's get into this Rose Hill meeting. Um, not the greatest betting meeting I've ever seen. <laughs> Actually, it's one of the worst. But it's uh, terrible. But well, look, at the end of the day, it's you know. Everyone's going to Melbourne. Everyone's taking their good horses to Melbourne. Now, Gay took a pot shot on her website of a few trainers saying, you know, look at this meeting, there's group races, everyone's ripping off to Melbourne. Well, hang on, where's Piero? Yeah, he's down there. So, right? pot calling the kettle black a bit. Mind you, um, what would he go in up here? Well, Stan Fox, 1500. Yeah, I guess so. That he wants to, she wants to have a look at many values. But everyone's exactly the same. Everyone wants to get them down there and get them ready for Caulfield Guineas and the like. So, uh, you know, you, you can't. <clears throat> it's just the way it is. Um, mm. I was thinking about it last night. I need to get a life because I was lying in bed thinking about it. And um, I think we've got too many stakes races in Sydney, especially for the three-year-olds at this time of year. Like, we had Golden Rose. Yep. We've had up-and-coming Ming Dynasty, Spring Stakes at Newcastle. Yeah. Um, we've got this one. And they're all in a clump within three to four weeks. Well, yep. there's only so many horses. Mm. Uh, and because horse ownership's not the cheapest thing in the world anymore, people more so today rather than 20 years ago, they're placing their horses where they can win. They prefer to go to Nowra mm. to win 8,000 yep. and then go around here and maybe pick up for just best. making up numbers. At best, yeah. Um, so... Well, you're right. We had anyway. Newcastle Carnival. Like, That's what I'm saying. Stakes, you know, it's like it's like we had the we got the last week we had the Bill Ritchie. Two days, three days before that, we had the Cameron Handicap. Now mm. we've got the Shannon Stakes. We had the Theo Marks. We're all, the, you know, yeah. when there's races on down in Melbourne at the same time. And look, the, 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 we're not getting the Melbourne horses up here. Of course, we're not going to get the Melbourne horses up here, mate. Why the money down up? there is three times as good at, at this time of year. Yeah, and, you, and then you've got to travel a horse up and then tra travel it back. You get one or two coming up for an Epsom or something, but you're not going to get a three-year-old, a gun three. No. Mind you, their three-year-olds aren't much chop. No. But you're not going to get a gun three-year-old up here to run around in our races when there's a Caulfield Guineas Prelude on on Sunday. Anyway. So what's the solution? What do they do? They condense these listed races and make another... A big I'll race? upset people saying it, but they need to have a look at how many black type races there are mm. on the calendar, cull a couple of them mm. and make them worth something. Mm. I, 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 put, I, put more prize money in them, I, I right, think. and make them worth mm. something. Because there, there's the other problem. In a general everyday Saturday race with all those prize money increases, we're up to 85000 now. So you're going around for 50 for first. Mm. Well, in the listed races, you're going around for 100, 60. It's a joke. So you get an extra 12000 Of that, you lose, what, you lose two thousand of it to jockey and trainer, mm. right? So you get an extra ten shopped up between ten owners, a thousand dollars each, and then you get hammered in the handicaps. Mm. 
And no trainer in their right mind is going to do that unless they're a genuine group horse. And that's why you see people like Chris Waller just taking his horses through the grass. Well, mate, it's just you can, you, you've, you've earned 300000 before you even yeah. have to go to stakes level. All right, we'll get straight into this meeting. Enough of a rant. Um, the first race is Go the Swannies. Benchmark 82 handicap, 2,000 metres. Here's some prices. Studio, $8. Hoi Lonnie, three twenty. Tahunga, $3.00. Ten dollars black jag, history no hurdle, eight, five fifty cool claim. Well it ran yesterday and one cool claim, so I'm wondering. There's talk no, there was talk he said he might back it up, but you can't bet until you know what's going on. Not with that in the uh, Mind you. <laughs> how could you bet? I, this is a the last way, uh, last week we made a comment on that Bill Ritchie that was the pretender's handicap. And look, this race isn't far off, to be honest with you. I'm gonna give Studio another go because I just thought his second up run was he got back. It was plain. It was a slowly run race, though. It was plain. I take, but quite often those horses they get over a bit of ground, as we've discussed before. They put in a good run first up. They go flat second up. You come back at them third and fourth up. You usually get some sort of returns sometime again in the campaign. So I'm going to stick with him. I think Tahunga will be better suited up to the 2,000, but I'll be watching for him more over the 24 and even further. Uh, and Do we I, have 4,000 metre races in Australia? Well, the, the, I was saying that's the where guys his future is. Canterbury, the, the 2,800 at Canterbury would be ideal for him, but then he got beaten in one of them, didn't he? It was a yeah, of but, uh, well, it missed a start. Mm. I, I don't know, it was that bad a ride. There was a big fuss over it. It was I'm mainly because it was all time. Yeah. No, yeah. but he, he missed a start, didn't he? Yeah. Was that him? Yeah, well, he's missed yeah, a start quite a few times. So, for me, studio probably won't be having yeah, a He missed a start him. first up, didn't he? Yeah, he missed a start I first can't believe they sent him out. And they backed him. Yeah, I know. It's really right. It was four dollars to three ten there first up. I can't. I, I just. To, I can't believe that. We had to go to Gosford or He is just an average name. horse. He is an average horse. He is a one pace plotter, <clears> right? And he is just an average horse. Anyway, um, look, I hate the race. To my mate out there that's got an email address with an alter ego, he's got an identity crisis. Yes, I do hate a lot of races, but the way I figure, there's plenty on, so if you don't like something, why bother? Um, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm with you, studio. I've given him the benefit of the doubt from the last run, but it was plain. I would like to see him do something in the straight, considering they walked. Yeah. Winkers go on here. Um, big gear change, I think, potentially. 100% with what you say about forgiving me second up run off a good first up run. I just, yeah, there's four Waller horses here. One of them, one of them is Studio that's gone mm. average last start. Then you've got Hoy Lonnie who's leading the 2013 race net Mardi Gras float. <coughs> um, Black Jag, yeah, he broke through two runs ago. He's never far away, but he's yeah. He's probably a rung below them. And then you've got Kua Klein backing up from Wednesday. Uh, yeah. You know, in the past, sometimes Chris's horses perform well on the backup, some don't. So yeah. and it's trial and error with them. And then you've got Tahunga at $3. I'd love to have a bet with Tahunga at 3 bucks. It's a lay. There's the yeah. bet. Just get on a bet fair and lay it until your nose bleeds. The only reason I wouldn't want to declare it a lay is because I think there's a lot of pretenders in this race. So he might actually be able to get the case. Mate, he's so. slow. He is. Look, he's, he's a one batter. I don't think he's that bad a horse. I just think he's, he's like a one revenged. Batter. I'd love to see him and revenge go around together. <laughs> just, I'll tell you what, you could have a schooner as they come up the straight. All right, race two. Race two. All right. The Bacardi number one rum. <laughs> there you are, Clocker. Uh, the Dulcify quality. Clocker loves his Bacardi. Tall, tall glass, you're telling me. Oh, tall glass, we're, no we're ice. We're going to see the Dat Day Dogs. A probably. Bacardi and a tall glass. Yep. All right. Proverb 225 favourite. Um, trophies 550. Three dollars Indianapolis. Laser Hawk 11. Eight dollars Islands Teardrop. And big odds the rest. I don't know what's going on here. Um, as a rule, I thought dual acceptors had to be scratched by 5, 5, 5 p.m. on a Wednesday. Now that hasn't happened with Patnax horses. Yep. It's Thursday morning, so if it, they're at Fordham, tipping a fine's coming, as it should be, because people are betting into those markets. It's not good enough. Mate, um, Proverb wasn't too bad behind price here. It was a slowly run race. It was plain. Do you reckon? I don't reckon it was that bad. It was plain. I didn't think it was too bad. I'm going to say I don't think it was too bad, but I don't think you'll be winning this. I, I've actually... Look, Indianapolis, there's... I reckon he's a good horse. Um, he's probably still got to prove himself, I would suggest. But apparently he's a, he's a middle distance type, so he's, he's, he's hitting, he should be hitting his straps in this type of race. I'm going to go rough. I'm going to tip strength. 
the Patna course. Speaking of how. He got did you not see it last Saturday? Yeah, he got lapped, but did you see how fast they went? The early fractionals was absolutely crazy. You go back through his form, he's actually he's run right around horses like Proverb before, if you go back through his form. Uh, he's a strong on-pace horse. Look, he's drawn the outside, he'll come straight across. Jason Collette, I don't think there's a better rider at the moment than Jason Collette, to be honest. I Collette? Was, yeah. I thought it was Collette. 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 I'm thinking of that singing, aren't I? <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> It's in a skirt, I'm tipping. Yeah, 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 yeah. funny that. <laughs> what are you saying? Maybe we could place you on this show. I wonder if there's any good sorts out there that are interested in a bloke. Email me, clinton at racenet.com.au. Nick's on the market. Photo. All right. <laughs> um, I thought Proverb was only playing at Newcastle. They went mm. slow, but, you know, he only whacked home and... I did make comment, I think, to you that in the past, this horse, he hadn't followed up on good runs mm. in the past. So I'm yeah. just, I'm not convinced with him. I think that might have been a bit of a myth in the Ming Dynasty. I know the stable weren't expecting it. $17, 31 back in the 17 I suppose. But yeah. there were just some comments that it wasn't expected. Um, okay. Trophies was solid in that race. But he had every chance. He was still beating six lengths. I, I don't want to be diving in at $3, but I, I've, I had to find Indianapolis here. He's, in his maiden, he was beating five and a half at Gosford, but he pulled up lane. Mm. Uh, they gave him 27 days off. He came out at Wyong. It was a 1,600 metre maiden, which is a rule. They can be average racers. Yep. But he just trounced him. He just kept going, uh, expecting to race right up on the speed. And I don't think there's any champions here. So oh. I think he's probably the one they've got to beat. Ireland's teardrop, similar sort of thing. He, they took him to the provincials, but he'd had a few goes. But... He won the last start on the same day, and he thumped Jordan. Jordan's a little bit of a form reference. He's raced against a couple of laser flash. He's got form around Jordan. Yep. Uh, I could see him sneaking into the placings, but uh, I think Indianapolis will be pretty hard to beat. Mm. Yep. I don't right. want to be on the top two. So we'll, and we'll, I definitely we'll... couldn't back strength off what I saw there last week. The ambulance nearly beat it. We'll be fun running run one two. I'm suggesting in that yeah. race. All right, race three, the Golden <clears> Pendant. <throat> oh, More joyous, a dollar oh four next. She or she wins. That's just it. And I don't even know if it's any point playing the multiples because they probably won't even pay that much. So Delzira is also nominated down in uh, down at Mooney Valley or Caulfield, I think, on the oh, weekend, yeah. and, and they put Boss on it down there. So I'm I would suggest that there is a good chance. Who's on it up here? Kathy. Kathy might go down to Melbourne, but. Um, Oh, she wins. Um, she wins easy. I want to see her really trounce him this time. I know she cruised late. I think she was just... Uh, yeah, I know that. I still want to see it. I still want to see it to the eye. She's but, lost um, no condition either. She's, yeah. She's yeah. Just... Excellent. Good. Her main task will come mm -hmm. after this. But uh, it's time to go to the bar if you're going to the races from a purely punning point of view, which not many do. So you're probably at home watching on TV with your computer and ten different... Betting companies open. With money in all of them? Yeah. Or credit limits, one or the other. Depends <laughs> how good you punt. Uh, if you punt any good, they chop you off, they say. Yeah. <laughs> all right, race four. I don't have that problem because I don't punt real good. Yeah. The Stan Fox Stakes, 1,500 metres. Two horse race, all brick. Our price is a courtesy of sports bet. We never met. Apparently, them. they don't cut you off. I don't have an, I have an account, but I haven't bet there for a while. So. $1.90, all brick. Uh, Cobain, 225. <laughs> Trophy, 13. Magic Shaft, 16. Uh, Mama's Choice, 15, down the bottom. Hey, right. I'm tipping Cobain. I'm sticking with him. What's I your reasoning? Reasoning is this. I thought last start rode him too pretty. Barrier 1 just didn't have the pace to kick up underneath over the 40. Well, how was he ridden pretty? It wasn't, he couldn't keep up. Well, I, well, what I'm saying here is I reckon he'll be, Nash will fire him out. He'll go to the front. I'm pretty... Pretty sure that unless someone wants to go absolutely mad, in which case he'll just take a drag in behind him as he does, which he does very, very well, Nash. I think he gets his chance here. Albrecht is a smother horse. He likes to get in behind him and get out and fire. I think he probably should have won the Golden Rose. He got worried out of that race. He was a bit unlucky. Um, the winner's a better horse. The winner's a better horse. The, Epilogue. the right horse won the race. Well, <clears throat> I think Cabay, I, I can see what will happen. Nash will get out, get out in front. He'll just stack him up a little bit mid-race, and he'll start kicking on the turn. Before they come into the straight, he'll just let it drift out into the centre like he does so well. Bang, bang, bang. 
Orbit will be coming out trying to charge after him, but I just think Cobain will have too much. I'm going to stick with him. I'm tipping Cobain. Um, I think I think the key to it is he dictates here to Albrecht yeah. rather than in the Golden Rose they were dictated to. Yeah. Cobain couldn't keep up um, early. Uh, Albrecht just went back last, had the last shot with the stable mate Epaulette. Epaulette got the better of him. But Cobain here dictates to Albrecht rather than being dictated to, and that's the key factor for mine. Um, I think these two are just, you know, they're the ones. Uh, one for your trifecta here. Horse called Divine Moon from Bart's Stable. I had something on it off its trials on the boo at $81. It was terrible. It just struggled to keep up. They took it to Kemble last Saturday, got back, had no running in the straight until about last hundred, and it, and I know it was a maiden, but it charged home. Improving horse, uh, out of Moon Charcha, who was the damn moon boat, so yes. the pedigree there to say the man can throw a good horse, or he is a good horse, is he's probably still <laughs> six months away, but if there was to be a blowout, he's it. Mm -hmm. If there was something, you know, to, to split the two of them, mm -hmm. he's the one. Okay. I have had something small on him at $101. Really? Yep. Oh, there you go. I wish there was eight runners. I'd be much more confident. Yeah. I, I'd cop 25 rather than 34 the place. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I, reckon, I reckon he's a good chance of running third. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good I think, he's, I think he's a promising horse. He's <laughs> one to keep your eye on. Yeah. And Huey. I'll get Huey. Barrier two. One, uh, Albert Cabane one two though, you're saying definitely one two? Oh, highly likely, yeah. yeah. Oh, mate, I'd love to see Divine Moon run straight past him <laughs> at $101. So this is, this is where I'm dirty on this not scratching. Trophies is here, yeah. right? He's an on pacer. Yeah. If he comes out of this race, it just makes Cabane a better thing. Yeah. And you can't bet because there's no scratching. Anyway. But All then right. if you back Cabane now, you, you're going to get the deduction. If exactly, that's what I'm saying. That's you, you'll end up with odds on for two horses. No, you won't. Oh, no. Surely not. Well, if he no. comes out, what's 225, 190? Sorry, my maths is no. just playing. You're already 100% basically there. It'll come in a bit. You know, maybe two. Well, you've got to take $2.10. $2.10, maybe. 13 bucks, what's that? 12 and a half, right. 8%. But I, I cop 210 in a two horse race. Oh, without doubt. There yeah. you go. All right. 